Hi guys, thanks for stopping by my channel. Um, this is gonna be my first video and I'm super, super, duper, super excited. Um, hold on. There's a, there's a crossing happening right now. Penny. So we started this whole like lifestyle change last summer when we moved to Alabama. We are from South Carolina and um, we've been here for almost a year. So we've been doing this for almost a year. So I thought I had some pretty good um, tips and tricks. And um, so yeah, I'm gonna talk about that. Number one is home decor and seasonal items. That's just something that I used to have a problem with. Um, I definitely have a TJ Maxx and Target issue. I can't not buy something when I go in there, but since we've moved to a smaller space, that's gotten a lot easier. We, um, um, so like a short little background, we moved from South Carolina a year ago, and I think I already said that, and um, we had a five bedroom house, three five bed, three bath house, and it was beautiful. It was our first home that we bought. Um, it was honestly too big for us. It's just the two of us, and at the time we only had the dog. We don't have any kids. So we had a lot of stuff. We accumulated a lot of stuff. We had a lot of stuff given to us to fill up the guest bedrooms. We just had stuff, plain and simple. Um, but when we moved to Alabama, <laughs> Rich's company put us in a two bedroom apartment and that was difficult in itself. We made the second bedroom, you know, we had like an air mattress and I had my desk. Uh, Rich actually kept his desk still in the living room because there just wasn't enough room for both desks. And I had all my um, clothes from the boutique and whatnot. It's okay, it's okay. Oh, kisses. Oh, I kind of took control of that office and we had like a dining area, but because it was a fully furnished apartment, they there was like a dining table there that we never used. So it just wasn't ours and we were only there for six months, but still we, we took at least 15 bags of stuff from uh, our old house to Goodwill before we moved because we just went through and we were like, why do we still have paperwork from 2010? Or 2007 why do we have so much junk so we we did that and we downsized a lot and then we stayed in the same apartment complex and actually just moved to a one bedroom in January so when our um, corporate lease was up we moved to a one bedroom and that took even more we had to really reevaluate like why we had everything that we had so we and by we, I mean me, I stopped buying home decor. I stopped buying decorations. Um, I mean, we still have like basic Christmas decorations and Halloween because we both like Halloween, but other seasonal like 4th of July and um, Easter, we just didn't see the point in buying those things anymore. And so that really helped us save a lot of money um, because I wasn't buying a home decor item every time I went into TJ Maxx or Target, which was really easy to do. Number two is cable. We eh, nixed the cable when we moved to Alabama. We <laughs> really lived a life that we probably should not have lived when we were at our home in South Carolina. We... I'll make a whole video about that. We spent so much money once we sat down um, this past year and reevaluated how much we spent in 2017 compared to 2018 it was bad um so we just got rid of cable we internet which penny which we use every single day we um stream and rich plays video games which we use every single day we um stream and Rich plays video games and we have Wi-Fi. We have Wi-Fi and um, we just did not see the point in having cable and we are huge Game of Thrones fans and that's mainly one reason why we kept, um, get down. That is one reason why we kept cable for so long is for Game of Thrones, but now we have HBO Go and it just makes no sense to um, 
keep that. Number three is subscriptions and memberships. We really reevaluated how much money we were spending that we didn't even, that we weren't even like aware of because it just automatically came out of our accounts every month. I had Apple Music and Spotify. I mean, they were both the student subscriptions. So it was five bucks a month, but still 10 bucks a month for both of those. It added up. You know, I had Beachbody on demand, which I use and I did have success with it, but that's forty dollars that is you just don't I, I wasn't using it as often as I felt like I wanted to for having that subscription so I got rid of that um, we got rid of our gym memberships which I don't even know why we had gym memberships because for the past four years in every single house that we've lived in we've had a home gym we have all the equipment we even have it here in our garage in a one-bedroom apartment so I don't know why we had gym memberships, but we got rid of those, um, and that was a huge, huge cut. Uh, I tan certain times of the year, and we got rid of that, and that was that saved us $55 a month, which I'm not proud of, but I was a tanning bed manager for like five years, and it's kind of, it just makes me feel good, and it's always nice to be tan, but yeah, we definitely cut that. Um, we still have Hulu, and we still have HBO Go. My mom does pay for Netflix your mom or someone else pays for a subscription like Hulu or Netflix tell me below so I don't feel so bad because I'm 28 and Rich is 32 and my mama is still paying Netflix um I really can't think of anything else that we got rid of subscription wise um gym memberships definitely if you have if you live in an apartment with a home gym or especially if it's summertime or like fall or spring even winter you can still do things outside i take piper for a walk every day you know you don't need that gym membership unless you're you know like training for something where you have to have that equipment but we we definitely felt is a it was a good investment to purchase home gym equipment we have a bench we have uh bars we have metal weights we have dumbbells like we have two sets of big dumbbells it was just worth it for us um and we would ask for that stuff for christmas from family or for birthdays and it just kind of added up but now we have a home gym and we don't have to pay 40 to 100 dollars a month to go somewhere and work out number four is uh nails <laughs> i do my own nails now i'm really it's something that like I put into my self-care routine a few times a week really maybe like twice a week yeah because they chip more which which sucks but I will go through and I will take my nail polish off I'll put oil on my cuticles I got a cuticle trimmer I'll trim them up I'll um <laughs> what's that called <laughs> I'll file my nails down I paint them really nice I have like five nail polish colors that are like my go-to's like this purple I have pink nude black um, I have a top coat and a bottom coat so I just it was something that I was spending 40 to 50 dollars on every two weeks that I just didn't need to do and you know my nails were long and I uh, part-time work with kids and it just wasn't I, I couldn't do it so now I have my real nails they're stronger than they've ever been and I'm not spending all that money and I mean, it is nice to get pampered. I That's why I did it. I didn't want to do it myself. I wanted someone else to do it for me. And I was willing to pay that money. But it's something that you can treat yourself with. You know, we did it, my bridesmaids and I, when I got married. Um, I'll probably do it for our anniversary or before we go on our honeymoon trip next summer. So it's just something to treat yourself with. It's not a necessity. And I definitely don't regret doing it. I don't miss it. Uh, I actually enjoy doing it myself. Uh, five, number five is Rich's haircuts. His, he could just buzzes. So I don't even know why he would go to Great Clips and get it done. But I think it was like 10 to $15 every time he would get a cut. And we just do it at home or I do. And I was not great at it at first, but it is literally a buzz. And we do it once a month maybe. And we don't have to pay that anymore. And that was you know, you think, oh, it's only 10 or $15, but it's every time you go, and it does add up, and it was just silly for someone else to buzz his hair when I could do it here. I do still get my hair done, um, but I'm pretty low maintenance with my hair, so it's not 
super super crazy i did actually say hey rich do you want to like watch a youtube video and cut my hair and he was like no you need to pay to go get it done so we do still spend money on that number six eating out during the week <laughs> We went through a transition in 2017 where we spent a year living in Rich's parents' lower level. It was hard. Like, we love them. They're amazing. We are forever grateful to them for letting us do that because we were able to save for a down payment for our house. It is hard living with other people. Um, you don't have your own space. And even though we did have our hole downstairs, we still had to share a kitchen and that made it to where we didn't want to come home and be in their space or have to clean up after we were done. And you know, you're mixing your stuff with their stuff. So we ate out during the week a lot. We lived right down the street from Moe's. <laughs> there were nights and I was, in, I was in school full time and I, my brain was fried by the end of the day. And I, he was too. He was, well, he wasn't in school, but he was working full time. And I mean, he didn't want to cook either. So that was the easiest option for us. But now we eat out maybe once a week, um, which is still a lot. Like we could probably cut that back. And I think in July, we're going to challenge ourselves and I'm going to um, do a vlog about this the whole month. We're going to do a no spin challenge. We have already decided we're going to budget groceries we're gonna budget gas and we're gonna have a little emergency fund for like i don't know an oil change or something but i don't see that happening because we eat out every weekend and we eat out once a week like once a week on the weekend and it's just something we do together we like it it's it's usually our date night so we'll either have date night here or we'll go out we'll go out it is not a crazy expensive dinner um it might even <laughs> what it might even be a lunch instead of a dinner, but we def definitely cut that back to once a week and we are going to try and do it more. We're going to try and do it less often. Number seven, excessive cleaning products. I, I love a clean house. I clean my house every day. <laughs> every day y'all it's like a stress reliever for me but that meant I was obsessed with cleaning products I had like two cleaning products specifically for the tile in the bathroom I had kitchen cleaning products laundry room I had so many cleaning products and not only that it's not great for the environment and it's expensive like it, it just gets expensive so I started making my own cleaning products you know with vinegar and baking soda um, essential oils and I will make a whole video about that but that saved us a ton of money because we aren't having to buy you know Lysol wipes and we also weren't hurting the environment which is uh, super super important to me and I will talk about that more later on um, number eight food we won't eat so I'm like a mad scientist when it comes to leaving food in the fridge for too long. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I just, I think like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get this food. You know, salad sounds so good this week. And then I, besides that one day we go grocery shopping, do not crave salads the rest of the week. And so that lettuce just deteriorates in my fridge and it's just money we've wasted. Grant, you know, produce is not that expensive, but... It add, you know, it adds up and we'll get chicken and forget to put it in the freezer and it'll sit in the fridge all week and then it's like, well, we can't use it because it's not good anymore. And that's just waste. And so we are very, very conscious about like using things that we have in the fridge or the freezer or the pantry. We don't buy it if we're not going to eat it that week. Um, our fridge and pantry are bare compared to what they used to be before we started this new lifestyle and that says a lot we were just letting things sit in our fridge and that was money down the drain and i'm sure everybody does it we still do it with certain things we can't be perfect but it has definitely helped our grocery bill number nine our books i love i love to read it's my favorite hobby i love 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 a good suspense book and i before we did this was buying on my target trips that i used to make and I still make sometimes. So, um, I was 
spending $30 a week, you know, maybe like two books a week. Cause I read fast. I mean, I, I would read two books a week. And so I would go buy those and, um, I mean, that was $30 a week wasted. So going back to the subscriptions, I did kind of cave and get the Kindle subscription. I want to say it's $11 a month, give or take a few dollars. And it's the best thing that I've ever done. It has saved, if you compare $30 a week, I'm not going to do the math, but there's 52 weeks in a year to $11 a month. It's no questions asked. That's what you should be doing. Um, and I did, I know everybody's going to say, well, you should have got a library card. I did. And I even got a digital library card and everything was always on a wait list. And I just am not about that life. I need it. Now, it's kind of like an instant gratification thing. Plus, I like I said, I read really fast, so I would go through books faster than they were getting them in at the library. Number 10, jewelry, clothes, and shoes. I am a in recovery shopaholic, honestly. Like, if you know me, you know that your girl can spend money. Yeah, a lot. Um, I have a friend in Greenville, and when I first moved back in 2015, I think, we would go out every weekend when Rich was playing video games, and we would shop. And that was probably such a toxic thing that we did, but I mean, I love her, and that was just something that we did together, and I don't know why, though. I feel like if I were to go back and look at my bank statements and see how much money I spent on those clothes, how often I wore them, and when I actually got rid of them again to buy something new, my mind would be blown. I, I did a decluttering video, and I'm going to post that, but I wish y'all could have seen my closet when we lived in South Carolina. We had a walk-in closet, and Rich took up a fourth of it. One-fourth. The rest was mine and it was stuff that I didn't even wear or items that I bought and I'm like oh well it's it's gonna fit eventually y'all don't do that mm -mm, don't do that it won't fit eventually <laughs> uh, and when it you if you get to that point where something will fit go buy something new don't have it sit in your closet and just waste because <sighs> that's what I did shoes i have a shoe problem i have so many shoes and i don't know what it is i know shopping definitely makes me feel better and that's a really toxic trait that i'm trying to like kill but i just had so much stuff and i don't even wear jewelry like these earrings basic my wedding ring that's all i don't wear necklaces so why do i have jewelry i have items that i've bought clothes, jewelry, shoes that I don't wear. Tags still on. I just buy them because I'm like, well, it'll go with this outfit eventually or uh, I might need it. Don't buy something if you might need it. If you need it, get it. I have so many jeans, dress pants, blouses that I'm like, well, I'm gonna, I might need that eventually or uh, it's just so cute. I'm going to find something to wear it with and I never did. So I just, we just definitely stopped spending money on that. I mean, we still buy clothes and shoes when we need them, if we need them, which we really don't because we buy quality items that last us. And that's the whole thing. You can shop at Walmart and do that whole frugal thing. And Walmart has some cute stuff and some things will last, but there are also quality items that you're going to want to spend money on, like jeans, shoes, underwear. Not really. I feel, I feel like you probably get your underwear from Walmart. But for me, a bra, like that is something that I'm going to spend money on. I'm going to go to Aerie. I'm going to get sized accurately. Shout out. That's where I used to work. <laughs> I'm going to get sized accurately. I'm going to spend that money on that bra. Plus, they have amazing perks. I... My mom went, used my rewards, bought four or five bras. I got one for free. This past month, I didn't even have to pay for that bra. Like, it just... Spend money on quality items. That way you're not constantly throwing things away because they rip or tear or they don't last in the laundry. And that's super, super important. 
Number 11 is items that we can receive as gifts. So like I was saying earlier when we were building up our home gym, we would ask for the dumbbell sets or um, kettlebells or yoga mat, you know, a yoga mat or um, stuff to go in that room. We asked for mirrors. We asked for like a small TV. Just things that you don't have to buy that you can ask for as a gift. Think about that and make a list throughout the year and at the end of the year, you're going to have this list of things that you're like, wow, I could ask for this and I won't have to spend my money on it because that's what we do. Or, or at least we do. We are very lucky. We come from big families. Our families are very close and we buy gifts for each other. That's not something that we really skimp on. Um, and I mean, they're not elaborate gifts. They're just gifts. That's how we all show our love. Um, and we've done that our whole life. And so it's easy for us to kind of make that list and say, well, these are things we want. And if the people in our lives that love us and buy us gifts want to get us some of these things, that's great. Otherwise, we're not going to spend our money on them. And that's that's really important because there's a lot of impulse purchases you make that you don't need that you could wait and get as gifts. Number 12 is flowers. I love fresh flowers, y'all. Like succulents and cacti. I'm pretty sure that's a succulent in itself. I just love flowers. And when we lived in South Carolina, I bought them every week, sometimes twice a week. We were just blowing money. I need to make a video about that. Blowing it. Um, so yeah, just don't, you don't have to buy fresh flowers. Or if you do, you don't have to get them all the time. Get them on special occasions or go to Hobby Lobby or a craft store of your choice and get really, really pretty seasonal um fake flowers that's what i had in south carolina when we started to kind of budget ourselves i would stop buying those fake flowers and i took some money and i went and i got summer flowers and i got fall flowers and i put them in a pot at my front door and i would just leave them there and they're beautiful and people still would comment on them so keep that in mind because that is an expense you don't really think about because you're like oh my gosh these are so beautiful they're fresh flowers and i can't wait to have them sit my home and die. 13. Gas station or quick food trips. Rich and I are the world's worst about like, oh, let's stop at the gas station and we'll run inside and get like a Dr. Pepper and a Diet Mountain Dew. Because those are our weakness. Those are our drinks that we drink. And we would do that a lot. Or we would go take Piper to the dog park and we would buy an energy drink for each of us and a bottle of water and like a breakfast food not only is that bad for us it's bad for our wallets because those five ten dollar items they add up quick and if you really sit down and look at like quick food stops or quick like walgreens stops that you've made you would be surprised at how much money you've just like blown and we'll i'm gonna talk about that and like what we still spend money on because we do buy bulk um anyway number 14 is alcohol we do not buy alcohol we don't get it really when we go out we don't have it in our house and that's not like a that's not like a we're better than you we don't drink thing because we still drink we both really enjoy whiskey we do have a bottle of whiskey but only because my mom bought it for us um and if we go out for pizza we'll get beer I love blue moon rich loves beer we go to breweries still but we make time for that when we have the extra funds we don't keep it in our house because neither of us drink really when we're home and when we go out it just makes your bar tab so much more so we just stick to regular drinks and we'll buy alcohol on special occasions but it's just not something that we need in our lives so it's not something that we need to spend the money on regularly number 15 our random target tj maxx or your weakness <laughs> store trips i like i said i'm a recovering shopaholic and i will definitely admit that and i i'm not gonna say rich is a shopaholic because he's not he definitely has more self-control than i do but when we're together we like talk each other into buying things. It's so toxic, especially at Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> we have spent so much money at Bed Bath & Beyond that we don't need to spend because we're like, yeah, we need that egg poacher 
for breakfast. It just makes sense. And that got us into a lot of trouble. So we had to stop doing that. Uh, we have to stop going on these random Target trips and TJ Maxx trips. Uh, we will, we do go to Target to grocery shop sometimes when we need things. But we also do our grocery shopping. So we're not tempted to just like walk around Target. We go to what we need, get it. Like the, I, the other day we went for, what did we get? I think we got, we were looking at food processors. We went straight to the food processors. We looked at a few that they had and then we decided we're just gonna get the attachment for our um, Nutri, uh, what is that blender, y'all? Vitamix? I don't know it's a blender that we have we're just gonna get the food processor attachment for it but as soon as we were done over there we went straight back to the groceries you just have to kind of start to develop that self-control but actually not going in those stores helped me a lot because I would go for fun when I wasn't working or when I was in school to just walk around TJ Maxx and you're like oh I'm just gonna walk around and see what they have but you can't just walk out of there not buying anything or at least I couldn't so I just stopped going all completely and it has um it has definitely helped but anyway those are 15 things that we stopped spending money on this past year when we switched over to like a minimalistic frugal living lifestyle i am gonna make a whole video about what we do still spend money on like this video let me know um press the like button subscribe to see more and just tell your friends about it